Thank you very much, uh, uh, Dr. Elizabeth. Uh, that was a really great presentation and great discussion going on. Uh, let me introduce myself first. I'm Dr. Anindar Homan. I'm the program manager for uh, antimicrobial resistance, viral hepatitis, and diarrhea control program in the Ministry of Health, Bangladesh. Uh, so I was I'm involved with this cholera control program for last uh, more than three years. And I'm very happy to share about our experience that we have recently conducted is uh, the identification of uh, uh, priority areas for multi-sectoral intervention in Bangladesh that we have just concluded. So in this presentation, I'll be talking in brief about the epidemiological situation in Bangladesh and the parameters for PAMIs, the indicators, the vulnerability factors that you included and the additional information that we uh, included, the flow of analysis, the workshop, main results, the way forward and lesson learned. After the presentation of uh, Dr. Elizabeth, I think my presentation will kind of give you some uh, implementation uh, example. So little bit about Bangladesh. Uh, I think uh, because Bangladesh is uh, representing in this GTFCC meeting for a long time. So I hope you already know, this is a very populous country in the world, eight most populous country. Uh, it's a very highly densely populated because the uh, area of this country is very low. And we are cholera is endemic in Bangladesh. So we have annual incidence rate of 1.64 uh, uh, per thousand population that gives us an estimation of roughly 450,000 hospitalized cases and more than 1 million infections per year. I know it's a huge number, but considering uh, we are a very populous country. So we do have a seasonality with a biannual peak. And the last large outbreak was uh, happened in 2022 in Dhaka city, which is the capital of Bangladesh. And uh, also one of the most significant area in terms of cholera activities. Uh, and Bangladesh is very much vulnerable to natural disasters, including cyclones, floods, and uh, climate change. And obviously, cholera is highly affected by climate change and all those natural disasters. And uh, for your information, we are, a, we, we are a Delta country. We are just uh, in the, in the uh, down part of Himalayan region. So lots of rivers are coming from Himalayan region, which is one of the reason for this cholera, uh, I think. And uh, it's a very densely populated country. So we do have a national cholera control plan since 2019. And this uh, PAMI activities, this identification of uh, high risk areas is actually part of our national cholera control plan. So uh, I will go quickly through our uh, methodology. The, our studied population was population above five years old. We, uh, we excluded the under five children because uh, rotavirus is more, uh, uh, more causing diarrhea in under five children. And our, most, our indicator is mainly acute watery diarrhea. Uh, as uh, Elizabeth was mentioning, most of our hospitals, they do not test for cholera regularly. So we had to resort for acute watery diarrhea. And this uh, diarrhea report uh, comes regularly through our DHIS system, DHIS2. And we took report from 2018 to 2022. So it's a five-year period. I think the lowest, uh, the least number of year. So the population, uh, we included the population uh, from census 2011 with a 1.2% growth trajectory. Uh, and uh, we also considered the census 2022 uh, for our validation. But for, uh, for your information, we have not included the uh, Rohingya refugee. I think you all know about the Rohingya refugee, the Myanmar uh, refugee who were staying in Bangladesh for last, I think, five years already. In, uh, in a specific area due to the living condition of there, which is obviously not representative of Bangladesh. So we deliberately excluded that. And our administrative levels, we took up to sub-district level. 
So there are uh, about four, 543 upujilas and thanas, which is sub-district level administrative unit in Bangladesh. We, uh, we considered that. Uh, so this is kind of a map showing the reporting units. So uh, it's, it's actually the color code means the, the darker it is, the more number of weeks it reported diarrhea cases. So you can see uh, the as the year passes by, the most uh, upojelas or most sub-district uh, uh, units, they reported uh, diarrhea regularly. And uh, there obviously some impact of COVID can be seen from the reporting unit map. So this is kind of uh, uh, our acute watery cases monthly distribution, mm -hmm. just to show you that uh, it, it, you can clearly see the uh, bi, uh, bimodal peak in a year. And also, I think, I'm sorry, where is the pointer? Anyway, you can see the bimodal peak and uh, you can also see the impact of lockdown for COVID-19 mm -hmm. is very clearly seen. So when we uh, uh, started our analysis, uh, we had to divide this into two parts because as I mentioned before, Dhaka is the capital of Bangladesh and it's, it's a very highly populated, uh, more than I think 22 million people and uh, very congested. Also the health system in Dhaka capital city is a bit different than other parts of the country. There are lots of uh, private facilities operating in Dhaka. So when we were analyzing, we had to divide the analysis into two parts because uh, uh, it won't match. So for the country analysis, our definition for incidence was number of diarrhea cases, uh, as I mentioned before, uh, up above the age of five years, reported per 100,000 person years over the five-year analysis period. And for persistence, it was uh, the number of weeks with at least 10 diarrhea cases reporting in DHIS2 uh, in the Upujilas over the five-year analysis period by the total number of weeks over the period. Uh, for in, an analysis of Dhaka uh, situation, we use the same uh, uh, definition for incidence, but for persistence, it was the number of weeks with at least one positive cholera test reported in Dhaka hospital over the five-year analysis period. So Dhaka hospital is a specialized hospital for dealing with cholera cases or diarrheal cases uh, under the ICD-DRB, I hope you know about the name. So, uh, and uh, this had the most comprehensive database. So we use this database from Dhaka hospital and our definition uh, actually follows that. So this is just to show you the score. It, it exactly matches with the GTFCC guideline. Uh, I mean, for incidence, if no case, 0 0.0 to median, 1 point, median to 18th, uh, 80th percentile, 2 point, and more than 80th percentile, 3 point. Same goes with uh, persistent. And our priority index score is the summation of these two scores, incidence score and persistent score. So this is kind of just to show you the uh, number of reporting unit with a score on the median and percentile part. And uh, uh, you can see the clear demarcation between this. So before you go to the PAMI, so this is a map just to show you the incidence score in a color-coded map. So the uh, on the uh, left-hand side is the incidence score and the right-hand side is the persistence score. And uh, you can see uh, more or less it matches with uh, both of these uh, matches a little bit. And the higher, the darker it is, the higher the score is. And we added some additional information. Uh, we added the vulnerability factors. Fortunately, we had a recent, uh, a, a recent compilation of vulnerability factors uh, in, uh, from 2022. So uh, they had lots of, uh, vulnerability factors, but we included flood information, cyclone information, uh, uh, salinity information, density information, uh, refuge information, wash, that means basic sanitation service and basic drinking and hand washing. Uh, these factors were uh, uh, included in the analysis. So this is these are the maps just to show you the vulnerability factors map and the extent we uh, went gone through for this analysis. 
some map on the vulnerability factors and the density of population in Fiji. I'm quickly going through this because probably uh, it's not that much important. Uh, so we do have a surveillance system uh, running since 2014. We have uh, now 16 sites active. Uh, it was total 22 sites. And we have a standard surveillance system with 20 samples per site per week uh, in 12 sites. And uh, first four samples, five days a week. All the samples undergo a rapid diagnostic uh, test on the site and systematic 20% microbiological culture. And uh, in the fourth site, we have an enhanced surveillance where uh, we additional to microbiology testing, we also uh, take uh, two specimen for RDT negative, uh, microbiology testing done for RDT negative stool specimen for every five specimen. So this map shows you the surveillance sites and uh, these are all over the country. So we included this data for our uh, analysis. Uh, and we have taken some other sources of information. Uh, one is we do have uh, data from our cholera outbreak investigations. So we have, uh, we regularly conduct uh, outbreak investigation uh, whenever we find any uh, report or any issues. So uh, you can see a map showing some areas we have done, contacted our investigation in last uh, 10, or, uh, 10 or more years. Uh, those that are included and obviously aggregated data from the surveillance system that I have shown before. And we have uh, included one important thing that is media monitoring. So we, we have uh, initiated a media monitoring system, uh, I think five years ago. And uh, this is kind of our, uh, the archive that uh, just to show you. So we regularly uh, uh, identify the health related information in the newspaper and we archive those. And it is possible to you know search uh, through keywords about the news. And this gave us a very good a way of val validating our funds. So uh, all that I have said is in a kind of a, a flowchart. So for uh, for the whole country, we have taken DHS2 diarrhea data, uh, five years old. Then we have uh, incidence and persistence per unit. Then uh, finally the priority index was formed. And then the first list of PAMI based on the priority index was found. And in Dhaka, it was a little bit different, as I mentioned before. Then we uh, uh, added the vulnerability factors. We added the sentinel sites data, and we conducted a workshop with national experts. I'll uh, talk a little bit more about this later on. And then we found our list of funds. And we did validate it not only through the workshop, but also from the uh, cholera outbreak investigation data, from control room data, from our media report that I shown you. Uh, and there, that's how we got our final list of PAMIs. And uh, we had a workshop the, the, in the February month of February. Uh, we had 48 participants with uh, coming from 15 organizations. So we tried to be inclusive so that every organization can have say on this. Uh, we had uh, lots of discussion on the PAMIs. And we categorized this into very high, high, medium, low. And hill track was given a separate categories because it's a, it's a special area where health services is very low and uh, intervention takes a long time because of communication issue. So it was a special category. And after all this uh, validation, stakeholder consultation, this is what we have, uh, uh, this is the result of our PAMI. So this is the map showing you the areas, high risk areas, uh, the more red, the uh, higher this area are. So if we, uh, uh, I talk about the very high category, it has 53 uh, upujilas, 53 sub-district units. And uh, that actually uh, culminates into 18 million people, 18 million people in the very high area and it's like 11% of the whole population. And if we also include the high category, that is 91 sub-district unit, and that adds more 28 million people, and another 28% of the whole population. So 
uh, yeah, if we consider this too, it's a big number of people and uh, we have a lot to work on. So way forward uh, as per the national cholera control plan. So we will obviously try to improve our national surveillance. We will include our, so uh, as we have mentioned, we are taking diarrhea data, uh, acute watery diarrhea into consideration. So this year we have included the dehydration status in DHS2 and we have uh, given RDT to every hospital trying to encourage more RDT based diagnosis. Uh, hopefully these results will start coming very soon and we will enhance our regional laboratories in the farms. Uh, we want to build a common platform with water surveillance, wastewater surveillance and uh, diarrhea surveillance that I mentioned. Uh, we will uh, we are planning for a multi-year OCV preventive uh, uh, campaign plan with a focus on farmies and obviously wash intervention will be prioritized in prime areas and we are trying to collaborate with uh, stakeholders who are uh, more dealing with wash and health awareness at community schools media social media before the peak season will be conducted uh, focusing on those farmies uh, and uh, I know discussion was going on to not to review PAMI every often, but we are planning to review our PAMIs in next uh, two, three years when we'll have those additional data, additional RDT-based data, additional dehydration-based data, and hopefully we'll review our PAMIs uh, and that will be more, uh, uh, more concrete result. So a little bit of uh, lesson learned. Uh, we have uh, found our country specific parameters that indicators to adapt to the surveillance system. Uh, we have uh, we have cho choose the vulnerability factors adapted to the country situation, vaccination, war status, disasters, etc. We had opportunity to discuss our result per division using division maps. So in the stakeholder workshop, we invited people from all divisions, all areas, so that they can uh, raise their voice and we discussed part division using division maps. We used a modified template from the uh, uh, GTFCC uh, and we used for presentation of result, we discussion and overview of the final results. And as I mentioned, we'll review the PAMI in two, three years. So it's uh, I'm end of my presentation, a uh, uh, few acknowledgement, like I must do GTFCC, of course, like the GTFCC, uh, guidance was so helpful. We did not have to invent any new methodology, all thanks to GTFCC. Uh, IFRC, they played the key role, especially Dr. Ann and Dr. Obhishek Rimal. Thanks a lot to both of you for helping us out. Uh, WHO headquarter, uh, can thank enough, and also the country office and all the stakeholders uh, involved. I thanks all of you. So this is kind of end of my presentation. Thank you, everyone. Thanks for inviting me for this very important meeting, for this surveillance meeting. Hopefully we'll be able to uh, continue uh, updating this uh, committee about our activities, our advancement, and also our challenges so that we can uh, discuss more and find some new opportunities, new methods of dealing with this important issue. Thank you, everyone.